continue from yesterday. We're talking about the the hay going into the kuf, right? The hay and the kuf are parallel to each other. When the hay is on the side of Kedusha, the kuf is on the side of the Sitra Akhra. And we said that the... How do you get to a kuf? Because you start with a resh, right? Because the resh does not have this bitl, which is the yud sticking off the back of it. Therefore... It says, Ragleha Yordos Mavis, her legs dangle into death. The leg, which is the left leg of the kuf, goes down below the line because the, the bit was not there in the Machshav and Dibur, as we're going to see soon. Then the Maisa is totally going wrong. And this is what we said in general the three lines of the hay represents Machshav, Dibur, and Maisa thought, speech, and action. And we see that there's a connection between Machshav and Dibur. Because the two lines are connected to each other, the horizontal and the vertical. But the left leg is a nifrad. It's, it's separated. It doesn't have any direct connection to the other two. Because we said the Indian of Maisa, of action, is like in a world to itself. Right? It doesn't see, in a, in a very clear way, its connection to its source. Thought and speech, you can see that they're clearly connected to each other. The speech comes out, you know that it was generated by thought. The action... It looks like it sort of got there by itself. It's not clear um, where it was generated from. Right, as we said yesterday, everyone recalls? In that, in that yeah. case, then, also speeches. You know, What'd like, you say? Like, I know you thought to, to hit me, or, or to, I know you thought to do this, but like, you, I can't see that. I just like I can't see that you're thinking about things. No, but the letters of the speech you know that speech didn't sort of, it didn't, it didn't generate by speech, right? It, the letters of speech are just a vessel to, to convey the letters that you thought, right? But the action doesn't take place in letters, right? So in other words, for example, you don't, you don't see, we said yesterday, like at great length, you were here, right? We said yesterday that if you see a, a cup in the shuk or some kind of a vessel in the shuk, the person made it, Right, is not anymore in the picture, and his his energy is vested into it, yeah. in such a way that it carries his energy, and and he's not around anymore, right? Because it's not whereas speech, at least live speech, as we say when a person is actually speaking, there's no way to dis- distance it from the person who's speaking, right? It's clearly connected to its source, so that's the idea that it, it goes into like a whole dimension where it no long you can no longer see necessarily, it's. Uh, its connection to where it came from, yeah, right? Sucks. Now, when you're talking about like hitting someone or like doing something with your body, so that is more of a connection to the obviously to the person. So there, we'll have to explain it slightly in a different way, which is that nonetheless, there's a huge gap because thought and speech take place in letters, and action is like if it is a translation in some way of what the person was thinking, it probably is, but it comes out like a completely different entity that doesn't look like letters anymore. So either way you look at it, there's a lot of different ways we can break this down, but there's a and where do we see that this is sort of the klal? Because it says, anything that's called in my name and my honor, right? It says, I created it, I formed it, I even made it. So we said the even, the word af, that comes in that pasuk, which distinguishes between Bria and Yitzira to Asiya, it's in the middle of the, it's in the, the af is right before Asiya, it shows that there's something separating Bria and Yitzira from Asiya. And that's essentially the same thing as saying thought and speech from action. It's in a different dimension. Yeah. Everyone's following me from yesterday's uh, class? Yeah? All right. So, we'll go on. But os hey, the Kedusha. When it comes to the letter hey, which is the side of Kedusha, hu kasher gimel levushi nefesh. This represents that the three garments of the soul, which is machshava dibur amaisa, thought, speech, and action, harihem me'ulim me'or ha-Torah. Right? It means that they are filled with the light of the Torah. Thought, speech, and in a hay, as opposed to a kuf, the letter hay itself is a letter of kedusha, showing that the thought, speech, and the action are all connected with Torah where they need to be. How? Ha-chokma v'amidos... Right, they're filled with with uh, the wisdom and the emotions. Which means in his thought, he is thinking thoughts of Torah. In his speech, it's only coming out of his mouth Torah. 
וגם במישהו פשוט ולא יד מי כאמר, even a simple person who doesn't know, so to speak, what's going on in the class, he doesn't know, let's say, not so much what's going on in the class, but he doesn't, he's not a man of letters, as it were, he's not a very bright fella, even such a person, but kol zeh, he still goes after trying to talk divrei Torah. In other words, you don't have to be a brilliant genius to have your hay instead of your kuf. It really has nothing to do with your sort of level of intelligence or anything. It's just your, your, the place you put yourself, right? That you can still fill your head with holiness and your mouth with holiness and your speech and your actions with holiness no matter what level you think you're on. Um, and you can always just say psukim. You can say tehillim. Right, or you're occupied in davening. And your deeds are the deeds of mitzvahs. So you're, you're containing yourself into the realms of holiness. And so it comes when all comes to all your physical affairs. All your deeds are for the sake of heaven. You know, you don't fall into a state where you're just wrapped into your taivas and moving yourself into areas of selfishness. You can be a, a real hay, right? Is a person like a bainani, right? It's a person who's got his all of his parts completely filled at every time with thought, speech, and action of Torah. Even in his mundane affairs, there, which is not necessarily Torah, you still have to eat, you still have to go to the store, but the whole business that you're involved in is all directed towards God in every in every way, for the sake of heaven. The Hainu. The gamba sees the bread shoes, which means even when the person is doing his permissible affairs, he's not involved in a mitzvah per se or t- learning Torah. What do you mean doing his personal permissible eating, Pre- drinking, oh. going to the store, talking to a, you know a friend on the, on the way home, whatever. It's like it's not what it means. Permissible means as opposed to commanded. Yeah, okay. al pi Torah. He's doing it. He's doing what's permissible for him according to Torah. In other words, of course, he's not taking opportunities that he has when he's not. Obligated in that moment of a mitzvah to do something illegal. How do we know to cleanse the Torah? It's on the of the Torah. What? That's what he's saying. This is this is this is the person's kavanah. He's going to make sure he does everything that he's doing oh, according to Torah. She should, that it should be l'shem shemayim. Kamo, for example, esek maso mata. For example, when a person's occupied in his business affairs, as it says, sheishis yamim ta'avod. It says six days you shall work, the seventh day you shall rest. So what it means, the sixth day you shall work, is the Torah is telling you that there's a time for you to just be involved in your, your affairs of going, making a living, do what you got to do. In other words, the Torah is not asking you to be a monk. And therefore, there's a whole realm of our lives which is like sort of neither here nor there. You're, 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 you're doing something to be a human being and to maintain yourself in the world. It's, so even there, you know, that's where you got to really watch yourself. Hakavana, what is your kavana in this six days you shall work? Right? And the Revach is Shiachol Lakayem as Amitzvah Lishmur Velasos. The whole purpose of your prophets is only in order to fulfill the mitzvahs, to guard them and to keep them and to do them. In other words, your whole business of being, you know, having some kind of a, of a, of a life for yourself, it's not for yourself. It's so that whatever comes out of that life, you can further amplify your, your performance of mitzvahs and your service of God. What's the Havayim? Revach, prophet. Profit, okay. Profits from the business. The intention is to make like profit for the kavana of the prophet is in order to fulfill the mitzvahs and to guard and to keep them and to do them. The kamoa mitzvahs, but tzedakah, but gemilus chasadim. For example, what do you do with your profits? You give it to tzedakah. You do kind things. Right, your whole life is basically l'shem shemaim. You don't have sort of like a side interests that are personal for your for yourself unless of course you need rest and relaxation in order to settle your mind to keep you in the game and so to speak make yourself stronger in other words there is no just stam life outside of your your mission and your purpose at every minute it's 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 before you you could play golf in other words the idea is there's nothing golf is permissible right but why are you playing golf because you're in a business meeting and it's a fancy one, and you have to go to the fancy golf course. All of it has a place, but the person is. The difference is, you could be uh, playing golf, and it doesn't. Ha- it, you're not really in any way doing it for the sake of heaven, because your whole purpose being there is that you just want to have a good time, right? You want to waste money. You want to drink a few drinks. In other words, you want to talk who knows what on the golf course. You could, so everything that's happening, you could do it for the sake of heaven. Like your purpose of being there is like you're a messenger, you're a shliach, you're getting 
what needs to be gotten out of it. Unless it's a forbidden action, right, then it can be used L'Shem Shemay, must be used L'Shem Shemay. You're not supposed to take interest. Interest like Rebis, you're saying? Okay. Right, I got you. That's a good one. Right? Also, so your mind can be clear and freed up to occupy Torah. To learn, to teach, to guard and to do. In other words, if you're stressed out all the time because you don't have what to eat, so you obviously have to go get a job so you can put food on your table. So the whole business that you're doing is really just so you can have a sort of state of tranquility so that when you go learning, you have a clear mind and you're not bothered by anything, right? So in other words, all your business affairs then are really L'Shem Shemaim. What are you going to business for? So you can have the time when you're not in business strong, clear, and free of, of worries, right? So it, it, it winds up elevating the whole experience of work because really the only reason you're doing it is L'Shem Shemaim for the sake of heaven. <clears throat> to guard, to, so to learn, to teach, to guard, and to do, as zmani kaviyus ha'itim the Torah to fix your, fix, to, to preserve your fixed times for learning Torah, va'avoda shabaleiv b'tefila, and your davening times, which is which is tefila. So in other words, really, a person's whole life is happening out there to sort of create the space that he needs in order to learn and daven with kavana. Kasher ose kain, and when you do so. Despite, despite the fact that you profit all this great time of learning, in other words, you took care of your business, you have now cleared your schedule for a tremendous time of learning. And despite the fact that you've literally, literally given life to your soul, because your soul gets its nourishment from holiness, Kedusha, learning Torah. And it's shining with the light of Torah and Tefil that you learn. Despite this, Hine odzos. Additionally, asher etzema esek maso matan shalo. So we're, what we're talked about just now is like the profit that you get. That it's not so much the interest is in the work, but it's what you get out of the work that you've you've cleared your schedule and you freed up some time. He says, despite, despite this fact, the actual work itself, kasher hu l'shem shemaim. When it's l'shem shemaim, which means who could the boy means it has to be done. If it's being done truly the Shem Shemaim, the whole purpose you're there is literally for God, it, it means it's going to be done properly. Meaning what? It means you're automatically going to be careful from cheating people, you know, stealing and lying, right? All like the negative business practices, if the whole reason you're there, truly, in your, in your sort of deep self, is only because you're doing it in order to profit and give yourself peace of mind and, and, and times to learn and sort of have like a healthy Jewish life, then for sure you're going to not go try and stealing because your whole purpose is there is like a, is a proper, healthy, good foundation. So he says, when everything is in, in its place where it should be, how do you do, Asher, kol Ela, Sone Hashem, because all this type of stealing and trickery and so forth Hashem hates. How could you do something which is completely opposite of godliness if your your um, proposed, you know, thesis is true that the only reason you're working is for the sake of God to give tzedakah and to learn Torah. So how you can, so you're a holy person? How can you be in the middle of your job stealing and lying and, and tricking and taking where you're not supposed to? So obviously, it's a, it would be uh, not to not to insult the guy, but you can see if you find your, if you wind up in a situation where you're you're doing those things, you're obviously your whole your whole life is out of, out of whack because you could, you could uh, certainly uh, no one thinks that they're working everyone sh- for sure is going to say to themselves yeah when I do work it's for sure it's for the sh- L'Shem Shemaim and I'm going to do it for God everyone Jew is going to say that to themselves no one's going to like I mean at least every Jew at this table no one's going to go into, the, into a, a forbidden business where they're going to start L'Chat going and cheating and stealing people that's not really what we're, we're needing to warn ourselves hopefully in this room but the truth is, is in the midst of all that, and you're a good Jewish boy, and you're going to do your work, no one's looking, you know, when you're, when, at, all the, at all the little details. You're going to take a few dollars here, you're going to maybe not mark it down over there, you're going to do this. There's all kinds of traps and, 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 and sort of, uh, you know, trickery that 
winds up in the, in the world of business, right? Just even if you're trying to be do, doing something good, you have to be very careful to not take advantage of anybody, right? Mm-hmm. So if you w- wind up yourself taking advantage of people, you can see that you're not, bichlal, your whole kavan of why you're in that world, it's really for yourself. You want a little more. You want another piece. You're, you're not doing it for God. You're doing it for yourself. So you can see from your actual business practices what your whole interest in this business is. So obviously we're going with a person who's doing the Shem Shemayim. He wants to. And therefore he is careful from all these things. Because those things are things that Hashem hates. He's not going to go fooling himself. So in addition to the fact that he has, he's guarding himself from all these things and he's profiting his time, the business itself is done properly and it shines in a revealed way by him. The Yamuna Pashuta, the simple faith, HaKavua B'chol Lev Ish Yisrael, which is fixed inside of every single Jewish person, the Birchas Hashem Hitashir, that it's really the blessing of Hashem which makes a person wealthy and not, so to speak, his own ingenuity and his own power. In other words, it's not... Wealth does not come from really your own intelligence, your own talents. It comes because of a divine blessing. And every Jew actually knows that in his heart of hearts. Right? So when your, your business is proper and you're living the right life, this emuna comes out in a, in a huge way. In other words, it's clear by you. It's shining. The truth of what you believe is shining because you're not trying to take anything out of it that's, that's, not, that's not from God. In other words, you're just like letting Hashem bless the business and you're just, all you're doing is making a kli, enabling it to be a clean vessel so you make a place that Hashem wants to bless. The blessing you know only comes when the business is a fitting vessel to experience the blessing of Hashem. Right, so you can't be cheating because you because that's that's the, your whole faith is on the line, right? If you cheat, then you're you're showing that you don't really have the, the amuna that all blessing comes from Hashem. You think if you you'll get a little piece, you'll you'll figure out how to steal a piece, and then you'll you're, you're sort of in, responsible for making your own money, right? You think it's coming from you, because if you realize that it comes from God, why would you cheat? Cheating is going to be the absolute opposite. If God giving the blessing, you're now blocking him from getting, getting, being able to give his blessing, right? So the fact that you're your business is run in an upright, holy way, shows that you believe in Hashem, that He's the one giving all your job is only to make it a blessing that's fit for Hashem. And, and okay, you guys are not in the work field, but let's say you want to get a shidduch, right? Or whatever it is, things that are important to all of us in life. We all play this game. So this is, it may, maybe it sounds like it's for some other guy, but it's extremely practical. Our job has to be to take all the necessary measures that we know that Hashem wants us to do, to be a chassid shayid in every way possible. And this opens up the v- blessing for Hashem. You can go on a hundred thousand dates, you know. But if you're holding back, so to speak, what you know you need to do, mitzad, the union of your own divine service, you're not going to see the blessing. And you can just take upon yourself like certain chassidish actions, you know, purely for the sake of heaven and, and stop yourself from doing... And, and all of a sudden, the first date is, is the, the lucky winner because you're doing what you have to do. This is basically how a, a, a Jew runs their life. It's very, very contrary to the way the world works. The way the world works, it's all... Take your time. It's, it's, not, you. it's not take your time. I'm not talking, it's all you is the point. It's like, in other words, that's why most people cheat, you know, in the world. The business world, it says like, Lavan represents the business world, you know. And the whole story with Lavan and Yaakov, when La- ya- Yaakov was over, here, over in, in learning in Lavan's place, Lavan's word to him was, the, the, the sons and the daughters are mine. In other words, when, when Yaakov took off with his, uh, with his children to run away and, and go back to Eretz Yisrael, Lavan chased after him. And he says, Abanos, Benosai, Abani, Banai. He said, the children are mine, basically. And, what, and Re, the Rebbe has a sikh about it. What do you mean the children are mine? If you want to be an old man sitting and learning with a beard and, and sort of thinking that the whole world is Yiddishkeit and Torah, you know, good for you. Um, it's tradition. You know, you, 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 you can look at your grandfather. When it comes to the kids, their mind. Who was Lavan? Lavan was the tricker, right? He was the cheater. He changed Yaakov's um, wife. He changed Yaakov's wife. He changed Yaakov's um, salary a hundred times, right? Trying to trick here, trying to trick. He represents the business world, right? And he says, "Listen, if you want to be, you know, the, the whole idea of like holiness and kedusha, and there's a God. Good. It's for the old men with with white beards. But for a kid who's got to make it in the world, 
The children are mine. They've got to go into the business world. They have to learn how to cheat. They have to learn how to get ahead in the world. They have to learn all the tricks of the trade. Tricks of the trade. That's what they call it, right? Because, because that's, that's how you go anywhere. Because it's very old-fashioned to think. You're just going to be an honest, simple person and spend as much time as you can learning and davening. Make a simple cleave for your, for your business and all of a sudden you think you're going to get rich? You're a fool. And you are a fool in their world. Because that's not how you get rich. Right, if it works like 20 hours. Yeah. yeah, you're a fool. But the truth is, is that you know that God brings the blessing. You could open up a little shoe store and all of a sudden you're the, you're, you're the richest shoemaker in the world. Or you can, you can open up a, a, a big, big CEO of a big company you can go bankrupt. In other words, it's not, you can't count on it because of your, of your status or your education or anything. Wealth comes in strange places. The way it comes, as far as a Jew is concerned, is it comes because you're an honest person who's making a vessel for God, and therefore all of your activity is based on Yiddishkeit. Your interest is Yiddishkeit. Your mission is Yiddishkeit. Your time is preserved for God and good deeds. And of course, you, it says six days you have to work. So that's also for Yiddishkeit. You're fulfilling your work because God wants you to. So the whole approach of the person is completely different, and therefore... It's glowing inside of you, the true amuna that's inside of every yid, that it's the blessing of Hashem that makes a person successful. And everyone can see that upon you, the way you do your business dealings. In other words, you're like different from everybody else because you're really not looking to take another piece for yourself. It's, a, it's an amazing quality. Okay. And the bracha only comes when you have a kli roi lebircha Hashem, a fitting... Um, kli, a vessel for the blessing of God. The Kain who misnaged gam b'shari and yanim shalo misnaheg. Sorry, and so he also conducts himself in all of his other matters. Hein ba'chilu v'shtiya. When it comes to eating and drinking, through the shame shamai. Right, this is a tough one. You're eating and drinking only for the sake of God. Right, of course, everybody has to work on this. It's very difficult. An extra spoonful of whatever it is. If it's not literally for the sake of God, you're cheating, you're stealing. Maybe it comes a little bit closer to home now because we don't want to think of ourselves as cheaters and robbers and trickers. But every time you're going to take a little bit of extra for yourself, what's it for? You've just shown that your whole life is slightly out of the balance of your true stated purpose. Right? All of us are here in yeshiva. We're all growing our beard, trying to learn Torah and be good boys because what? We believe in God. We believe in the Torah. We believe. We're believers. But what happens our belief system and our life that we're actually living are not aligned properly. And the proof is our, our permissible matters are going out of, out of whack. Right? Because they're not 100% L'Shem Shemaim. Okay, listen, we're not a tzaddik, we're not even a benini. Take it easy on yourself. We're just getting aware of the situation so we can try and put it more into balance. Because what would it look like if you were eating the L'Shem Shemaim? It would be Lavraz Gufo. It would be purely for the sake of the health of the body. Because you need a body for one reason and one reason alone, not to enjoy sugary foods. That's not why you have a body. You have a body in order to learn, daven, serve God, and do mitzvahs, which is ultimately a tremendous, tremendous tainu because the blessing is there. You feel wholesome and you feel good and you feel love and you feel deep connections and relationships and you feel one with Hashem when you're a healthy person. I think Atzadik probably has a pretty good self-confidence, he has good self-image, he's got a lot of good friends, he's loving life, he's like a happy person, right? So in other words, this is what, I, I'm just saying that because I don't, it shouldn't be like boring, like you're here like to a robot, you're here to learn, daven, serve God, and therefore don't eat anything, it's the opposite, in other words, you're, you wind up hurting yourself. Free. It's freeing. It's freeing. You wind up hurting yourself when you, when you start to leak out of the edges, that's all the places in your life when, you, when it winds up biting you back at some other time. The principle basically is like this. Whatever look is really fun and good in the beginning, it's going to wind up usually being a, a snake bite in the end. Think Bill Gates is <laughs> and when, you, when, when, you, when your decisions are made on, maybe I should have a little self-restraint in the beginning, it winds up giving you a lot of comfort and satisfaction in the end. This is basically the claw of how to approach things, as far as I've learned. Is there? That appears to be nectar at first, it's poison at the end. And that seems to be po uh, nectar at first, it's poison in the end. So well, you just said the same thing twice. Did. <laughs> Didn't no. you? Yeah. No? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I agree with you, it's doubly true. It's all fun and games until someone gets to the nectar. 
All right. Anyway, I'm with you there. That, that is a saying of sorts. He's coffee, right? He's coffee. Ice coffee, they call Ice it. Coffee. Ice coffee. I like that. Like key, code word. Yeah, anyway. Ice coffee. So, so the idea is that... L'shem Shemayim. Ish, ish, lefi muhusu medregasu. Again, each one, according to his, who he is and his level that he's on. You should not try for... What he, why is he saying that giving us a nice warning? Because don't go crazy on day one. In other words... You know, it used to be that people used to fast a lot. And the Rebbe, of course, everyone knows, he told us in this generation we shouldn't fast. But when people would ask the Rebbe if they should fast, because, you know, for all kinds of reasons, a lot of Baal Chubas, they come to me, they want to fast. It's a big thing. Whatever, because it, it, you do feel like it's a penitive, 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 what is the word? Penitive? Penitent? Penitent. It's a penitive. Type of activity a person feels like you know. I remember when I was first going about Truva, my dog was sick. I went to the rabbi. I said, Rabbi, do you mind if I fast? I want to. Anyway, he tried to hold back his uh, his laughing. But anyway, no. But there is such a feeling that you want to do something, right? Yeah, but, uh, you just so you guys know, I can I can relate to all the mishugasim that I hear coming out of this place. Anyway, so so the idea is that what it, the rabbi would say to them: Don't fast, but fast, let's say, from sugar. Which is, if you, anyone knows, it's much harder, right, to like be in a state of like sort of self-restraint and and still allow yourself to, right? You know the famous story. It says the Hasidim were, were sitting around, each one telling the accolades and the, the greatness of their their Rebbe. So the first one says, "My Rebbe is the greatest. He doesn't. He only eats, you know, once every week, and and he's, yeah. he, he, and it's unbelievable. Like he's like, he fasts the whole time. He's like an angel. He says, Ah, okay, that's pretty good." You know, my Rebbe is not so good. He, fa- he, he fasts a whole week and he eats only Arab Shabbos. So he's okay. He said, the, the one third, for, I told it out of order, but that's okay. The third one says, my Rebbe is the best. Why? How could it be better than this? There's an angel. He says he eats three meals a day. Right? He eats three meals a day. Why is that such a great... Because it's much harder to eat three meals a day, l'shem shamayim, than it is to fast and not eat anything. True. Right? Because, it's, because as you know, you could, you could say, for example, a person, let's say, wants to make an oath and take themselves away from, let's say, doing drugs. I don't know. Alcohol. Right? So you could do such a thing. Right? And it, it, it takes a tremendous amount of strength to do that. No question about it. Many people are just stuck on it. But it's much harder to not take an oath and to be at a Fabring and, so to speak, drink responsibly. It's so much harder. Yeah. Right? You can see that it's so much harder. Because basically, it's in front of you and it's permissible and it's somewhat even good. We make Kiddush. You know, a person takes a fast, he won't even make Kiddush. Nebach. He can't make Kiddush on wine. We just learned all the laws of, of, uh, of uh, Kiddush on wine. You have to dafka run after wine and old wine and good wine. There's something good in L'shem Shemayim about alcohol in the right place. So to take an oath from it, it's, it's, fi- it's inappropriate in a certain way. But to enter into it is dangerous because all of a sudden it opens up a, a can of worms. So the whole idea of like restraint, that's what the, he's saying here. I went off on this thing. Because he's saying each one according to their level and their, 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 they, how they know themselves. In other words, you can't go too far into taking on all kinds of... Because then you might just like crash. Right? Yeah, you're for sure going to crash. You, know, you, can't, you can't put yourself to a level of you're going to fast and you're not going to do this, you're not going to do that because ultimately it's not true. You're going to do all those things and as soon as you remove the getter, you're back where you were. At the same time, you, know, you can't just let yourself go. So you have to, so to speak, don't fast, don't eat sugar, right? And don't, not even don't eat, don't eat sugar today, right? And, and the idea is like, in other, for, yeah, it's, 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 it's an Indian of knowing where you are and judging yourself, but it's L'Shem Shemaim. All of a sudden, you're not going to eat sugar. Your, your whole eating is L'Shem Shemaim. Because you're, why are you choosing these foods and choosing that food? It's like you're, you're, your whole concept of eating has gone into a situation where you're not just hungry, stop at the store, get a bite to eat and go on your way. It's a divine activity. You're trying to eat so that you can serve God because you have a whole thing with how you eat. So it's interesting, you know, the world is also interested in like diets and health and all this. We all, it's, a Jew should be uh, theoretically involved in that activity, but for totally different reasons. We're not doing it because we're sort of like obsessed with the diet, you know. People are all into this thing of health food and this and that. It's not an environmental thing for us. It's a service of God thing, which means that you just want to be totally concentrating on the fact that everything you put in your mouth is for the sake of, yeah, but, but the sake of health is not stom, like people worship health today. Right? It's like their religion in a big way. Right? Yeah, people have done it in the past. In other words, the, the Greeks, you know, the perfect body, the perfect this. Like, they did it for themselves. Even the health 
was like an obsession with self appearance. It's a, we're doing it because we want to have we want to have time to learn and dive in. The body has to be basically in primarily in oh, shape to do that. Certain foods, and if you don't eat those foods, like you become sick. Or like so that's what I'm saying. That's l'shem shemayim. You can't. Your body cannot be sick. It's, it's an avodas Hashem. It's like having you have to have medicine to have a healthy have body, right? But that's how you should see all your food. What makes you healthy? What makes you sick? Right? What makes your mind clear? What makes your mind foggy? And upon these principles is how you eat, not stam to be healthy, because the healthiness itself is for the sake of serving God and being to, uh, being able to do do mitzvahs and serve Hashem. Right, so we can't really eat like ice cream or chocolate or candies. It's Listen, when I asked this exact question to the great Rabbi Goldberg in the shir just like this, he said, listen, in the Lubavitch, a while back already, the Mashpim stopped telling people to have a coffee with food. So I got to say that right now. Why? Because it came that, that certain people were doing it in a way they were hurting themselves. They didn't, they didn't like take, they didn't, everyone's talking about don't eat the ice cream, don't eat the sugar. And all of a sudden, Rabbi, it's an Indian in Lubavitch. Rabbi Goldberg told me this. He said, like, the Mashpim already, for, already for a while, I think from the, from the previous generation, there was, like, certain mice, people were starving themselves, and they got sick, and they hurt themselves, and they said, okay, like, enough of that. He said, however, to walk down the road licking an ice cream is disgusting. That, that's, that's how he, that's how he down, came. Yeah. Right? In other words, you can't... Listen, you, you, we're not in a, situ, in a generation or situation where we're going through all kinds of fasts. You know, yeah. I would say, where's our escafia? Stop giggling in the middle of class. Come on time. Leave on time. You know, there's so many things we could have escafia on where you don't have to get involved in hurting yourself and you could already learn this principle. He's not saying a person shouldn't do escafia with food. He's saying it's not like what you come to a mashpia and he says, Rabbi, how should I work on yourself? And he'll say to you, stop eating sugar. Right? It's, or, or stop. It's like, it's not, that's not really like the first thing. That's not the advice that we're giving off the bat. Not because it's not true. Because you don't want to get people into like a, oh, people are kind of starving themselves. Yeah, there. Right. There's all kinds of wacky food diseases that are going on. What do you call it? Anorexia. <laughs> etc. You don't want to get people tripped out on, on the food thing because it's like a disease in our times, big time. But, but, but it's got, okay. Point me. There's also scafi on speech. For sure, scafi on speech. There's, there's a bechla when it comes to scafi on speech. That already goes into a lot of times into the not permissible, right? We're talking about scafi in permissible things. A lot of speech that you, people say is not called scafi. It's called iser gamor. You're, you're not allowed to say a lot of things that people say, right? Okay. Anyway, going on. Wait. Wait. We're not going on. But how do you go from how do you go from like Kuf and Hay to 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 like the most interesting stuff ever? <laughs> <laughs> Kuf and Hay I thought was the most interesting stuff. I'm just getting through this part. Um, because he's talking about what the Hay is. The Hay is this is thought, speech, and action, which is holy for God. And so he's explaining to you that when it comes to your thoughts and your speech and your actions, and now we went into even your permissible actions are holy for God. If you're not on this level what we're describing, you're not a hay, you're a kuf. Oh, right? so if you do the opposite of all this, you're a kuf. For sure. Right? That's what he's got. That's why he started suddenly talking about that's why he started talk, suddenly talking about all these idea of, of sanctifying yourself. Because he's he describing that even though you're in a realm of the left leg of the hay, but it's still a healthy left leg, which means your action, even your permissible action are entirely involved in where they need to be. They don't, so to speak, dip below the line. So that line is the, is the line of being for God. Every time you're going to take an extra bite, which is not for God, you dip below the line. He said each one according to their level and their, their essential essence. Okay, it's not so bad to dip. You could take two dips <laughs> below the line. But I'm saying, in general, you don't want to dip below the line, right? Because then you turn into a rasha, not a bainani. Uh, and then your feet are dangling you down along the uh, yeah, below, ground of hell. Yes. So he says, so it is with all other things, eating, drinking, and the like. It has to all be l'shem shemayim for the sake of the health of the body. So you can fulfill mitzvahs and learn Torah. Ish, ish, lefi mahusu medregaso. We're going on. What does it mean according to their mahus and medrega? Some are mari Torah, mari tefillah, mari ubdin tavin. In other words, there's different types of Jews. Some are mamish osek in Torah the whole day long. Some are daviners. Some are good deed doers. Right? It means they give tzedakah, gemus chasadim. And they're constantly out. And that's like their service of Shem. Okay, not everyone's going to be on the same rank. In other words, of, of the, what, they, what they serve. Vadome, right? And, and the like. The Farnes Anim, in other words, his main occupation is to feed the poor. So he can't be sitting and learning all day. He works. 
Because his main thing is that he's a money maker and he supports yeshivas, just as good. Lios metamchin duraisa, he's a supporter of yeshivas. Begufa umamono, with his body and his money. In other words, so not everybody is a Talmud scholar, he's a supporter of yeshiva by running around buying the milk, running around collecting the money, also good. The az kasher osei zos l'shem shemaim, when he's doing all this l'shem shemaim, Hini b'derech mamela automatically etz him a poel hu kadaboy. That means his business and the whole activity is going to be proper, right? You're never gonna, you, you, you know, it's like it's, if the Rebbe, you know, goes and sends you on a mission. Let's say he says something so clear. He says, "Go give these to fill in to the guy on the end of the subway when you get off at X, Y, and Z stop." You're not gonna go and bring the fill in and jump over the, the subway bar. And, and, and knock over the old lady sitting next to you while you're busy on the mission with, with the tefillin with the Rebbe. Right? It's just not going to happen. Like, you're, you're mamish l'shem shemaim. So when your business is the l'shem shemaim, all the individual affairs inside of that business are going to automatically be l'shem shemaim. You're not going right? It all has to do with your kavana. When you're not feeling yourself to be on the mission of the Rebbe, so you're going to knock over to this, you're going to bump into that guy, you're going to take more than what belongs to you because you're bachlal not in the right headspace. All these things and these disproportionate this, this behaviors come as a result of us bachlal not being planted in the right place. It's all about finding center and finding home and then all things wind up, you become a hey. The kamoshu b'achil For example, in eating and drinking, shenizar you're going to be careful from the excess. Not forget about kosher. Of course you're eating kosher and the highest standards of kosher. But you know there's plenty of people who eat the highest standards of kosher like a pig. Sorry to say. Right? Because you can eat like a pig at highest standards of kosher. <laughs> you're not eating a pig. You're the pig. Right? Like, yeah. yeah, because, because <laughs> why are you eating? You forgot why you're eating. You forgot why you're eating. You're, eating. you're not eating for God. The highest standards of kosher. But make sure you get more than the guy next to you. Highest standards of kosher. Right? <laughs> Which means that even the excess, something which is more than he needs, he's careful from it. And if you get a businessman, a holy, 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 holy businessman who's like this, think about it. These are like the real, like, you know, it's what he's saying. Like, it doesn't matter if you're in business or you're in Torah. Imagine if you made a billion dollars and you only kept what you needed. The world would be at peace, right? Because how much does a person need already? Even if you need to go on the golf course. Even if you own the golf course in order to have normal business meetings. You have, you, you have so much excess, right? And a holy person, he doesn't take the excess because it's not the same Shemaim. Everything, his whole purpose of life is to give to yeshivas, to, to, to make Talmud Chachamim, to build a base on Mikdash. So this is a person, every one of us is that billionaire. We have tons of energy, tons of time. Baruch Hashem, he bestowed us with a whole lifetime of time. What are you going to do with it? Any extra time, you, you can't take it for yourself. It has to go into divine service. And you know what you would look like if you gave all of your extra time to divine service? Well, first of all, with your short time in yeshiva here, you'd be a Talmud Chacham much greater than all the rabbis. If none of you wasted any time, Within a short period of time, you'd be an unbelievable Talmud Chacham. How much time is wasted? Right? You're a billionaire with time. But we take, 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 take for ourselves. We have to be L'Shem Shemaim. And then all of a sudden, that's what I'm saying. It's a good life. Because you, the, it may be hard in the beginning, but the rewards are unbelievable. It's like you're actually a normal person. You're a healthy person. Anyway, Hashem should help us. You don't take the extras because... Your intention is not to fill your taivas. You're only there to make your body strong. Because you need a strong body to serve God. And the same is true with all other matters which you're involved in. He says, for example, someone who collects money. Right? Some people have to collect money. It's, it's, it's not a fun job. But you do it in such a way that you do it peacefully and by making people feel good about giving the money. And even though sometimes you have to do it very strongly, a guy doesn't want to give money, it's not okay. Especially in the, in, in, a yid has, a, has an obligation. You go to the billionaire and he's like, no, I'm cool, I'm playing golf today, I don't have time for the rabbis. You're the collector of the, of the, of the money for the yeshiva. This is not okay. And, it's not, and you're trying to help this guy because it's not okay what he's doing for himself. 
So sometimes you have to speak strongly. La moral is a double but talk of God, and you just stand strong on a certain Indian. But ye nasa adavra who behidr but the right oh sorry, I'm I'm jumping ahead of myself. For example, you want to make something behidr, you're collecting money because you need golden Aron Akodesh and you need golden you know ha- sink handles for the yeshiva. Yeah, you want to do a a beautiful yeshiva. Get the best students. But call I can go to yeshiva when you make one. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We're working on it. So you have to speak strongly. You gotta get the money out of the guy for his own benefit, basically for God's benefit. Because there, nonetheless, who medaber benachas tam. You still speak gently and with words of reason. In other words, you, even when you're like clearly. In other words, this is like you're back on the subway with the rebbe's tefillin. It could be what he's saying is you're clearly going to do a holy job. But even then. How are you going to do it if, you're, if there's any sense of self in it? It's going to come out looking selfish. And therefore, even in the, Mamish on the shlichos with the subway, it's a possibility of bang, banging the old lady over and taking her seat. In other words, it could, it could happen. Because you have to, in every sense of the word, be guarding from the excess of yourself. And therefore, you're doing it Mamish l'shem shemayim. Um misrachik ma'gaiva ad ketza achron. And first of all, you come back and guess what? You made the billion. You got the golden things. Now what? You have to be so careful from being arrogant about that. Right? Your successes are not your successes either when you're the Shemayim. Your mom is a shliach. You're just here to serve. May that be everyone's problem. Liosha ikrehu etzlo penimius. That's what the Rebbe said actually. You know, there's, there used to be an Indian of, uh, of uh, Chachamim didn't want wealth because they said it's, it's a bigger test to have wealth than it is to be poor. It's a test to be, it's a for sure a test to be poor, but believe it or not, it's a bigger test to be wealthy. And so there was the, 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 the Rebbe and, and another Hasidic Rebbe were having this whole conversation in like the 50s, it's like, or 60s, there was a video of it, and the Rebbe's like, it was like a very strong, he's like, listen, in our times, let the Yidden have the, have the test of being wealthy, okay? Yeah. I'll take it on myself, that should be our test from now on. <laughs> yeah. So he said, it is a harder test though. And in fact, there was this one t- time when the Rebbe had a, uh, and when I say wealthy, I mean also arrogant. You know, I mean, you can become, that's, that's the test of it, right? No, no poor person is going to walk around so, so arrogant, right? He walks, his tro- he has other problems. But the rich guy is arrogant, right? Theoretically. And therefore, it's a very difficult test to have arrogance, right? So that you want to stay from the, you have to say, it says, the Rambam says, every midah, you have to find the middle ground, except for arrogance. You have to go away from it. He says right here, ad ketza achron, to the most extreme level. So there was once a story that uh, the Rebbe was telling over this kind of thing for, by Fabrengen. And he says, it was going on and on and on about how wealth, wealth is much a bigger, bigger of a test than poverty. And he said, but anyone who wants to take on this test, raise your hand right now. Well, and and only, guys, a, only a few people in 770 raised their hand. And they all became wealthy. Mamash, ex- exceedingly wealthy. Like billionaires. Yeah. I have a friend that was one of the students. He was like extremely wealthy. He was one of the people in the room. Uh, like he got a bracha from the Rebbe to be rich, and like now he's like filthy rich. I saw, I saw, I actually saw dollars, and, and the guy, and the guy said, a guy passed by the Rebbe, and he's like, he's like, I, I, I heard one, I heard that you said that, that you said this, that you, that you do this. I would like to be one of those guys that raised their hand. <laughs> what did the Rebbe say? I don't know. He said <laughs> whatever. It was like just, just the fact that you right. say that. Like <laughs> anyway, dude, I'll get a flight to. The, the rubber right now. Man. For what? Because you want to give all your money away after you make it, or you want the money? No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> let's think about it. <laughs> no, I'm serious. It's like we have a taiva Monday. for these things, and sadly, our taiva, Alavai, our taiva was to mama sh- buy the building, Rabbi. Alavai, our taiva was to buy the building. You know, Alavai, our taiva was to, even my taiva was to be to buy the building, Alavai. But it does. We hear this story, and we want to be rich. You know, what I'm saying it's it's very hard to be the shame shemai, mama. She's she's trying to put something in our heads over here. <laughs> Why is it okay? So he says, all this is when it's done with with, with, with you're the Gabbai Tzedakah again. You're collecting money. He says it has to be done with nachas and with sensible arguments and so forth. Misrachek ma'agayva ad ketza achron. You have to distance yourself from arrogance until the extreme. Liosha ikur hu etzlo penimius ha'inyan. How does a person maintain all this? How do you be on this diet all your life? You can't. You can't just stop being on a diet like that. It's that much iskafi is going to be almost impossible unless. You are, the panemius is clear by you. When your real goals and the real mission is, is shining openly by you, then the hiskafi becomes easier. 
Right? When a person already is so pumped up on doing, the, on doing his mission, so for sure he's not going to knock over the old lady, for sure he's not going to jump over the turnstile, for sure he's, because by him it becomes very simple to hold himself back and to eat in a healthy way when the inner concept of everything I'm doing is L'shem Shemayim, and I'm like here as a messenger of God, when that panemius idea shines by him, it's what makes the whole, so to speak, business run properly. The panemius ha'inyan, who mitzvah Hashem, and he realized that his whole purpose here is to do a mitzvah. V'zeu os hey b'kedusha, finally, this is the hey, we just described the hey, be a hey. Where's the os kuf, ooh, the os kuf, Machshava dibur maisa de le How does he like uh, control himself to like, make sure like the, 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 this kafia is not gonna like kill him or? No, the kafia. I mean, look, his kafia is not probably gonna kill a person. It's gonna be too much for him. He no? should be in con- in concert with his mashpia on, on a regular basis. That's that's how you do it. I'm saying you don't you don't do any really of these types of avoda. At certainly at first and even maybe at second, you know, without. Supervision, because you could you could you could think you're doing something good. You could say like, yeah, I know plenty of people. I'm gonna face a fast. They fast half a day. They fast three days. Like they're they're just going into this area where it's not so smart what they're doing, and they think it is. It has to be consulted. There, people did this before us. Look, put it like that. So what's the idea of the mashpia? He heard a few things. You know, he's tried it himself. He saw other people do it. There's a way to do this properly, and you have to consort consult with with people before you. But but the real Indian. I must say, is how do you get that panemius locked into you that it becomes less and less difficult to have iskafia because you remember who you really are. And that's what we're doing right now. Basically, you have to have a healthy, healthy, heaping double dose of Hasidus in your life. Because that's what makes a person realize what they're doing here. Right? Even if you, if you could be doing all Torah mitzvahs the whole day long, even then, without Hasidus, you still... It says that what was the base of Mikdash, the second base of Mikdash destroyed? Because they, they had plenty of Tamil Chachamim, it says they, they forgot to make a blessing on the Torah. They, they forgot to make a blessing on the Torah. What's the meaning of it? They forgot, if they forgot to say, Baruch Atah Hashem, no sein ha-Torah. No sein ha-Torah, he is giving us the Torah in the present tense. Because the idea is that you can be learning your Torah and think that it's, it was given thousands of years ago and you're just sort of doing a deed. You forgot the giver of the Torah, that he's mamish alive and well, more than you. And, and you're, you're here serving him when you learn. In other words, so you can get into a situation even when you're a big Talmud Chacham that it's just, it just becomes an intellectual exercise and you start looking down on people that don't learn. You forget that you're in the presence of God. The only thing that keeps you in the presence of God Hasidus. is Hasidus. It really is. So you have to give crazy. You, can, you can't learn too much Hasidus because that keeps like the panemius of your, of your mission clear and then it just makes the whole rest of the avoda much more doable. It won't make you go and, 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 and go to solitude and, and, like, and like, you know, just meditate. Right. It will, it will actually like, you know, bring you into the world. If, yeah, Chabad, Chassidus for sure. Uh, we're going to have to stop before we get to this kuf. But the kuf is coming. Oh, Rabbi, just a time. <laughs> So instead of saying what the hell, we say what the kuf. <laughs> 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 <laughs>